Uh, today, we're having a really wonderful webinar. Uh, Sin7 is working with Accountfully and David's Toothpaste today to talk about maximizing success, um, talking about your IMS journey and how it begins with implementation. We've got some great speakers for you today. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves a little bit, but Connor is uh, a part of our team here at Sin7. He's a senior partner manager. We've got Eric Buss, who's uh, the CEO of David's Toothpaste. Brad Ebenhoe, who is the CEO of Accountfully, and then Michelle Emerson, who works with David's Toothpaste in Accounting. Uh, Connor, can you start us off and just explain a little bit about what it is that you do here at Sin7? Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Um, I manage most of our larger implementation partners, the U.S., EMEA, and APAC region. I come from a supply chain background. I implemented the tool for a little bit over a year before transitioning into the supply chain or the partnership space. And now I uh, have the pleasure of working with partners such as Accountfully and super, super excited to be here today and to have one of our customers on as well, Eric with David's Toothpaste. I guess that's the lead in for me. So my, um, my name is Eric. I am the CEO and founder of David's Toothpaste. Uh, we are a premium, a high-grade, premium, high-performance natural toothpaste sold in about 8,000 stores coast to coast. We're in chains such as Whole Foods, Albertsons, Safeway, Vons, HEB, Natural Grocers, of course, good old Amazon, and uh, many other specialty retail stores. So we've been on a very fast growth curve and uh, really needed a tool like Sin7 to be able to uh, keep up with our growth. Great, great start. Uh, Eric, I think that leads really well into Michelle. Can you just talk us a little bit more about your role with David's Toothpaste? Sure. Uh, my name is Michelle. I've been with David's Toothpaste about two years and um, I came in as accounting, and but now I dabble in a whole bunch of different things like production and uh, the inventory and purchasing and all those things and uh, Sin7 and uh, Accountfully help with both of those. So I look forward to talking with you guys today. Well, and that leaves you, Brad, bringing up the bringing up the rear. Let's talk about Accountfully. All right. So um, CEO of Accountfully. Accountfully is uh, essentially an outsourced accounting um, firm that uh, works with a lot of uh, inventory-based businesses out there, specifically more so in the consumer packaged goods space. We've been around for a decade or over a decade. And uh we have uh, a SIN7 core specifically um, kind of uh, expertise support uh, service that we uh, offer to our clients, as well as um, any kind of brands out there. And looking at, <clears throat> I was looking at some numbers on my end. We've actually worked with 130 plus different brands since 2018 on core specifically for the most part. Um, and clearly before that one, it was called Deer. But um, but yes, we have a lot of expertise in implementation, just general consulting support, as well as how it integrates from an accounting standpoint into uh, QuickBooks Online and things like that. So very excited to be here today and uh, looking forward to the chat. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. Let's get into it, guys. Let's dive in. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to hit why expert implementation matters. We'll go over some of the common misconceptions that people have about working with an implementation partner. We'll talk about things to know before you go through implementation, the do's and the don'ts. And then how do you stay successful? How do you keep this moving and, and make sure your business continues to grow? And then we'll definitely have time for a Q&A. So I'm going to let Brad and Connor take the wheel on this one. Can you guys start with uh, start us off with why expert implementation matters? Yeah, of course, Brad. You want to take the wheel or you want me to go? I'm more than happy. Why don't you get started and then I'll provide color on this one. Absolutely. So why expert implementation matters. So inventory management systems inherently, they are complex. Um, at the end of the day, it is a calculator in the back end that tells us how much inventory we have, what it costs, and um, what sales channels we are making certain levels of inventory available to. So um, fundamentally, it does something simple. But actually getting that system set up within your tech stack or your business ecosystem can be very complex. And that is where we lean on expert partners to come in and say, okay, what is it that you and your company are trying to do? What are your current workflows? 
we are system experts. How do we ensure that that system aligns with your workflows and or do we need to configure some of your workflows to work within the system? And just a note, I have been now on the tail end of well over 300 uh, partner implemented projects. And to date, I have not had a customer come back to me and say, hey, Connor, I'm I'm really upset that we spent the extra money to use a partner for extra or for expert implementation. Um, that's the God's honest truth that is yet to happen. So why expert implementation matters truly is just to get everything done correctly the first time. So you're not playing cleanup, wasting time, wasting money. Definitely. And I'll add a couple of other things here as a <clears throat> small business um, owner myself. Uh, the amount of resources that you have internally that can help you execute on big implementations as well as how they impact your organization <laughs> as a whole can be very time consuming and complex. So leveraging a, a partner, an expert that understands how the system works, how it integrates with Shopify, how it integrates with Amazon, with accounting, what the workflow should be, how we can create efficiencies on how the, the product list is currently configured, et cetera, really kind of helps alleviate or creates efficiency in that process there. Um, separately is on the uh, for, on the, the, uh, the last bullet point here on the first time insurance long-term success. Um, <clears throat> as we all know, once you do something once and it doesn't work well or you don't do it well, like a lot of times you won't go back to actually doing it or focusing the time and energy on it. Um, and, and there's a lot of kind of time wasted, money wasted. So getting it right the first time makes a lot more success in that aspect. From our end of Comfly, what we typically do, just so you all are aware, like the amount of time and energy it can take us from our perspective on implementing a system and, and, and having it go live and supporting our clients the first 30 days post go live can be anywhere from like 20 to 40 hours. It's not a lot of time if you look at it that way, but we've done it over 100 times. We have it down and have it very efficient. And if you've never done it once, it's even though it's a very user a great user experience, great user interface from kind of what I've seen in competitors, systems and software packages. It is different than just looking at a spreadsheet, looking at QuickBooks Online, looking, you know, at a PDF report. So um, I think uh, this makes a lot of sense and uh, had no idea what uh, Connor just pointed out that nobody ever complains about it, but that's a, that's a great stat right there, so. Yeah, that's a huge testament to your team, Brad. So I'm, I'm really glad, Connor, that you shared that. And I think that kind of lends well to, to Eric and Nichelle. Can you speak a little bit to um, what it was like for you to decide to go with an expert in implementing uh, an IMS? Yeah, I mean, for us, you know, we are, we're a manufacturer. We actually, we buy all of the individual raw ingredients that go into our toothpaste. So we, it's, you know, mission critical for us that we have the right system in place to be able to track each of the raw ingredients. We have uh, all the ingredients drop shipped to a contract manufacturer. So we're in since in since seven, we're able to break up our inventory that we have in our warehouse versus what we have at our contract manufacturer. So being able to track all of that in real time and to uh, make sure that we have the correct inventory levels, make sure we have the right cogs associated with all all those uh, all of our inventory. It's just it's just so mission critical. So you know. As far as why implementation matters, when we decided to onboard, we knew full well that we wanted to have this done right because it is so critical for us. So, you know, when we looked at the proposal, the expense, it really for us was a no brainer that the, the costs were, you know, relatively minor compared to um, the importance of making sure that it was done right. That is great, Eric. And I think that speaks a lot to maybe a lot of the concerns or, or similar feelings that uh, viewers today are, are kind of feeling, or viewers on this webinar today are feeling, um, wanting to make sure that they're doing it right, that this is the right move and, and making sure it's seamless. I think all of you have touched on that. Um, so I think that really explains why this is so important and why having an expert and a partner in that um, really matters. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, so now let's get into the myth versus the fact of it all. Um, we've talked a little bit about how uh, expert implementation is really about having a partner to help you bring in Sin7 uh, into your into your workflow and how you can use it. Um, can you guys, Brad and Connor, can you talk to us about maybe some common misconceptions and how we can prove that those aren't aren't always the case? Yeah. Um, so one myth of having an IMS solution is that 
bring in someone, um, bring in a team to help set up a system that's going to accurately account for all of our inventory, going to hold all of our purchase order information, all of our sales order information, um, and, and move all that data over to our books. But after it is set up, it is definitely not a one-time setup, and then it rides in the back end um, perpetually and does what it needs to do. Is it an automated system? Yes. But whatever inputs you put in are inputs that you're going to get out. Um, so it is very important to know that post-implementation, it is going to be important to maintain the system. Um, just like anything else, just like a car, put gas and you put oil in it. Same thing with your IMS system. You need to make sure that your inputs are clean in order to get the outputs you desire. Yeah, and I'll, I'll uh, kind of expand on that slightly. Basically, a big part additionally of, of using a partner like Accountfully and other ones that exist is having a conversation up front on this in terms of, hey, so once I implement this, I don't need to do anything afterwards, right? A lot of times we actually talk to people and are like, no, you need to do this, 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 after we understand their inventory and supply chain complexity, complexity right? right? Some folks are buying a finished goods and reselling it. So there's some levels of uh, of brands or uh, companies out there where it is more set it and forget it or more automated than somebody that's more complex, maybe in-house manufacturer where you need to be in every day, right? The, the ones that are like that are more so maybe just D to C sales on Amazon and Shopify, buying and selling a finished good, et cetera. So there is a level of kind of on the spectrum with that, but there is times when we've told people you don't have sufficient resources, i.e. Uh, people on your team or time on your team to do this. And let's not go down the realm of implementing yet until you're at a bigger point, right? So understanding that it, there is going to be complexities, there's going to be time spent on here after the fact can go to help you make a better decision up front, maybe even pass on the software until later in your cycle of your business as well, because it is not set it and forget it. You have to be in there, you know, daily, weekly, et cetera. <clears throat> and then even moving on to kind of the next myth of inventory adjustments will no longer be necessary. Um, periodic inventory counts will always be necessary in any sort of system, even if you become a huge company and move to NetSuite, right? Like this is part of a, any business, right? What inventory do I have on hand at my warehouse, at my 3PL, at Amazon, at my office, et cetera? Um, is, is, is it a necessary evil, right? From an inventory perspective, just remember that um, that is your biggest, basically cash outlay is inventory. So managing and having proper oversight over that is, is crucial to your business. So you should be counting that to ensure that there's maybe no theft going on at a minimum, right? Or people are counting things right, or there's no spoilage, et cetera, right? On the core side of things, if you're doing um, the workflow properly, the amount of inventory adjustments or whether it's quantity or dollar amounts should be much less than doing it in a manual nature because you have visibility day over day over day in multiple locations of, of quantities of transfers and things like that. So getting to the root cause of why there's inventory uh, adjustments, core really helps you out with that. So if you're actually at a position where your business has a lot of adjustments, or you don't have like the actual precision on where things are at when they're supposed to be at a different location, that could be a good reason why moving towards core, because then it could help you better define that. But you'll always have some sort of inventory adjustments that come into play if you use an IMS or don't use an IMS. One of the things I'd like to mention as well is, you know, when I started the company, I was operating under the misconception that all accountants knew how to handle inventory. And um, it didn't take long to figure out that actually we went through a couple of di different accountants that really had no concept on how to really properly account for inventory. And so part of our whole journey in, in, in figuring this out, we came, we, we kind of, uh, we looked at a lot of different systems and the, the final conclusion was that we need to have the right inventory system. And we also need to have the right accountant that could also help us with that system as well. And so that's where Accountfully really came into, into play. Accountfully, they not only helped us with the full implementation, but they are also our full-time accountant and CPA as well. So I would also um, just want to drill home the importance of not only having the right software, but also having the right implementation partner and longer term, the, the right, a right accountant as well, you know, that can help you um, on an ongoing process. That's actually just a great point. This is Brad here. Um, we've had 
we don't just do uh, core kind of expert implementations or support for our accounting partners. We also do them for just brands out there that just need more systems implementation and support than they have, whether an in-house accountant, accounting department, or an external accounting department. Accounting department. There's been several times where we've worked with brands, implemented and or just maybe supported or cleaned up their implementation afterwards that their accountant literally has no idea, number one, that they're using core at all. <laughs> so communication to your accountant is required of, hey, we're using this now. Is it going to be integrated or, integ uh, or not? Secondly, they have no idea even how the, the sync or the integration works in terms of how things flow from this system to this system or how we should reconcile inventory and COGS on a monthly basis, you know, et cetera the whole nine yards with that aspect. So as part of some of this, we'll talk about stakeholders and things like that, but having every part of your business, operations, accounting, leadership, et cetera, engaged, we're moving forward with this uh, system and package is, is necessary for like, uh, you know, optimal success. This actually brings up a question that we're getting and I think is worth clarifying. Um, uh, talking about roles and how an expert implementation or and having an implementation expert will be uh, beneficial to to a company implementing an IMS. But can you and Brad, maybe you're the best person to do this. Can you explain exactly what an expert implement an expert in implementation is? Like, what do you do? Because we're having questions based on um, is this someone outside of Sin Seven? Does Sin Seven also help with implementation? Which we do, but I think it's valuable to really get the basic of what is an implementation expert at the very basic level. Yeah. So at the very basic level, basically what happens is like somebody like account place. So let's kind of back up of where we came from. We started pure from an account outsourced accounting standpoint got more and more clients that were inventory-based businesses. And within that, we actually got a couple of clients that used and or implemented core, which used to be called Deer, years ago. So basically with our accounting background, with our uh, inventory uh, kind of expertise from just pure accounting, um, we were able to really dive in and, and learn the system and understand how it integrated with, uh, you know, QuickBooks, with Shopify, with Amazon, with EDI, with, with, with the whole nine yards there. So over time, we've got very comfortable with that software, very similar to how you may be comfortable with, uh, you know, Excel or QuickBooks Online or, you know, a CRM that you use out there, right? You just get used to it. So that's where we've been able to become experts in understanding the functionality of the product, how the product uh, integrates with external um, systems, like I mentioned. Uh, how, what's the best way to set up <clears throat> various, um, you know, products and SKUs, uh, what's the best way to set up a bill of materials in terms of if you have in-house employees that are on W2 versus not, right? So all those things, we've seen best practices across different companies, companies with multi-sales channels, companies with different um, supply chains, i.e. in-house manufacturing to turnkey to basically the middle where you use a command and source everything and own everything and, you know, multiple locations. So basically... An expert implementer, an expert consulting, or somebody that understands the system, and then separately, when we come in and help, basically we're leveraging Sin Seven Core as the IMS for that software, and then we are implementing it to basically their accounting system. Whether we're going to do the accounting or whether whoever else does the accounting, but then understanding, okay, um, we're going to do this. So basically, what we do is essentially part of the implementation is typically three phases: prepare and prep, right. And then step one, step two is go live. Step three is post go live support. So during the preparation process, it's basically getting all master data that exists. By that, I mean, what are all the products that you're selling finished goods? What are all your bill materials? What are all the, the, the inputs that you're actually buying? Inventory, you know, tolling, labor, what are the landed costs that go into your product? Freight, um, you know, duties, et cetera. Where do, you house, uh, uh, where do you house your inventory, your office, your 3PL, Amazon, et cetera. So getting all that data into place, getting the vendors and understanding all that is a big start of, uh, aspect of that. So we go through and, and get all that data into like this spreadsheet and Google sheet, we call it the inventory workbook. So we have all the data ready to go, launch a core file, integrate it with QuickBooks Online. That's the one that we use the most. Chart of accounts, sync up, vendor sync, et cetera. Clean up that level of data get the products in to the system. And then we're almost there to where we then connect shop by Amazon, the external you know, integrations from a sales channel standpoint. And then we turn it on after we get a basically go live count. So then we get a go live inventory count of everything, location, every product, every raw material, et cetera, put it in, go live, and then it goes. 
once it turns on though, that's when things start breaking. Team members need support. Where are we doing here? So then it's that consistent post go live support to seeing how things are syncing into your accounting system, see how things are syncing from the different sales channels, see how uh, supporting the team in terms of, hey, I'm doing this assembly, this is bombing out, what am I doing wrong, right? So it's that consistent go live support as well that over time may just go away fully or may scale back or even to the point an expert partner like us, we can even help you within the system of kind of maintaining some of the data in that aspect. So basically it's a, it's not just get it going, go live and see ya. It's a process of going through that. And then while we're doing it, it goes to kind of number three here on this list of no changes in my current processes is needed, right? So we're going to go through and kind of walk through your processes as well as how you're doing it now. But then it is to the point of the fact that it's a perfect time to review and improve the workflows you have from an operational standpoint, from, you know, assembly standpoint, from a reordering standpoint, et cetera. So as we're using it, we have seen best practices on various workflows and processes that these brands have used out there across the different supply chains and those the different sales channels to then implement that. And then at that time, they can change the process and we can kind of be that change kind of leader in supporting the workflow of everything there. Thank you so much, Brad. I think that was super helpful and answered a lot of questions. Uh, you know, hard to say when, you know, when you ask a question like at the most basic level, what is an implementation expert? But there's just so much associated with that. Um, and, and since seven can help with that and having a partner um, and an expert on hand can really, and, and I think Eric has already spoken to it, can really take you from uh using a, a software that you kind of understand to really having a deep understanding and knowing that it's done well. Um, I'm going to carry us into the next slide because I think we've talked a little bit about some of these pieces, but I think it would be great to dive a little deeper on uh, what do you have to keep in mind as you're going through implementation and you're starting this process? Yeah, um, one thing that's very important to keep in mind are what are some mission critical workflows that cannot be altered. So it is it is very, very rare, but I have been actually the customer um, implementing a, a system for our company where we had a very, very mission critical shipping cost calculation workflow that had to occur in our Shopify cart. And during that time, we were implementing um, a larger ERP system um, that was not Sin7 in tandem with the WMS. And we were, it was like 70% of the way through the implementation, we found out, hey, we are actually not going to be able to charge for shipping the way in which we want to charge with this um, three-piece system that we had put together. It actually, it debauched, it derailed the project entirely. We had to start from scratch. So, um, two-tier approach on mission critical workflows. One, you should always enter an implementation, understanding that this is actually a really good time to reevaluate your workflows, to make sure they are best practice, see if there are any efficiencies we can tease out um, and be willing to change those uh, to, to better your company and to work with the system. But also it's very important to know too, okay, what are some workflows that we absolutely cannot lose? And to know that on the front end and make sure those work, that way you don't get 70 to 80% through an implementation and realize it, it might not be a fit. So it is rare, uh, but I've seen it happen only a handful of times, but uh, very so very important to know. And then in terms of go live date, um, it's very important to say, hey, we are turning off these systems on X date and turning these systems on on Y date. If you don't have an actual go live date, Projects like this can tend to drag along. And also you can get a little bit of analysis paralysis where you're trying to make sure everything is absolutely perfect at launch and you're not going to go live until everything's perfect. And it's the reality is there's only so much testing you can do. So it's, it's less important to have a completely perfect error-free go launch than it is to understand, hey, I've got a team around me that can find whatever might break quickly and we'll clean it up within one to two weeks to have a full-fledged system moving forward. Um, in terms of internal stakeholders, uh, Brad, I'll pass that to you as I know your team coaches other companies more specifically on the training aspect uh, with internal stakeholders. 
Yeah. And even back to the go live date, just one um, aspect of that, just making sure that the go live date that you're going to um, implement or, or, or move forward with an IMS is it kind of correlates and relates to maybe not the busiest time of your company's sales cycle, let's say, or inventory cycle, right? If your biggest time of the year of sales is Q4, maybe don't implement it and go live on November 10th. Let's wait to maybe January so then we can work through all this over a couple month period. That's a little slower period to kind of work out those, you know, kinks and issues that you have. So what Connor says, like any system we use, right? There's times it bombs out or times new functionality exists. So we have to kind of go through that. There's a training process there. On the internal stakeholders, one thing I will say is that just having buy-in, number one, from leadership to ensure leader, excuse me, to, to ensure that this is what we're doing as an organization and this is what we're moving forward with. And then this is very important to us. So that's step one, the tone at the top of, uh, of this, because if you don't have that, and if this is, okay, the leader or the CEO of the company wants this, but then really hasn't overseen or properly under, uh, integrated or communicated to maybe the inventory folks, supply chain folks, the ops folks, how important this is, then maybe it never gets done or never gets done right. So having buy-in across the internal entire organization is very key in this. Um, and then separately making sure everybody who's a part of this kind of goes back to what I mentioned a minute ago of making sure the person who, you know, your, your, your person who handles, you know, sales invoice entry to pick, pack, ship your warehouse, those who handle the, the, the purchase ordering to the receiving, to, to, to the inventory management accounts, to those who impact accounting and everything kind of in the middle, right? Making sure that everybody is aware of what their roles are going to be, that we're going to use the system as of this date. Lastly, I would say on that aspect, what we do typically after the fact when we implement, we walk through a <clears throat> inventory system kind of service level agreement. Specifically, that's more so of uh, kind of a checklist of our, what is accountfully going to help you out after the fact versus what your client or your team is going to do there, right? And who's going to do it how often. Even if you don't use a, a person like or an expert like us, even after the fact or for any data entry, it's good to have a checklist, right? Of everything that somebody needs to do at this level, maybe it impacts five, six, seven, eight, nine people in your organization, depending on how many people touch inventory and sales. Okay, you're going to go in twice a week, you need to do this, this, and this. You're going to go in once a week, you're going to do this, this, and this, right? So making sure that's in place. And then clearly, we all know this is from life. After a while, you know, over an X period of days, it becomes habit. And then all of a sudden, it just starts running and it starts operating. Then you can do the cool things like inventory planning and, and, and minimizing the inventory in hand and really focusing on, you know, trying to simplify the cash cycle of when you pay for inventory because you want to do it, get it just in time versus when you invoice in the whole nine yards and really then efficient size, efficient, create efficiencies across your business, right? But that internal stakeholders is so key. And when we implemented this with Eric um, uh, here at David's, he's the CEO and he knew how important it was. So basically the entire organization took it on and said, okay, let's go ahead and implement it. And it was a really successful implementation on that. Anything on that, Eric? Yeah. You know, you know, we have, we have a small team. So there was just a couple of people that were really involved in, in the implementation. I mean, our experience with the impl implementation is that, um, you know, everything was very well defined. It was all laid out in advance. Um, there was no surprises at the end of implementation. Um, everything was working correctly. Um, the, the budget that was put in place, um, there was no surprises there. Um, you know, it was rather, a mo rather modest amount compared to some of the other, uh, implementations that we looked at. If, you know, you, you, you go look at some of these other systems like an SAP NetSuite, you know, you can have a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar implementation. So this was a much more modest implementation but it allowed us to have a world-class solution. It met all of our needs um, without any surprises. So, you know, um, we, we were very pleased when, when the, when the project was, was, was over, you know, we were, we were happy with the su success of the impl implementation. It was done on time, on budget. And then, you know, it's been a couple of years now since we implemented and uh, we've been happy with account fully, um, you know, cause things can break along the way. You can have a, uh, Amazon can make a change on their back end. So data starts feeding in differently into the system. And then being able to have an expert that can, you know, go in, you know, look in the back end, figure out what's going on and fix things, you know, has been critical for us for not only the implementation, but keeping things working, you know, longer term.
Thanks so much, Eric. I wondered if you could speak a little bit more too about like what it was, uh, you know, as you were looking at implementing um, what features you were really hoping to find in, in an IMS. Um, I think that would be super helpful to dive back into just a, a little bit. Sure. So for us, you know, again, as a manufacturer, we, we really, uh, we had uh, launched our company on QuickBooks Online. And as a manufacturer, that's buying all the individual raw ingredients and sending them to a, a contract manufacturer and then getting bulk toothpaste into our facility and tracking bulk toothpaste into finished goods. There's just no way that QuickBooks Online could do all that. So it just did not have the functionality that we needed. So um, as we got larger, we figured we, uh, we really, we, we knew we needed to have a more robust um, inventory management system. So I personally went out, um, you know, kind of analyzed who are all the players in the space, uh, trying to really figure out, you know, who has the, the system um, that, that has all the functionality really that we need. There's some systems that maybe have a lot, you know, have additional functionality that we didn't need. Um, it seems like from what I can tell um, that uh, Sin7 Sin had, had all, all of the functionality that we needed as a smaller manufacturer. Um, you know, we're not, we don't have manufacturing plants in 12, 12 different countries all over the world and having to do all kinds of, you know, uh, work with all different currencies. And so maybe um, some other platforms might have been better for that. Um, but uh, for what we needed, Sin7 Sin Core did everything we needed um, is primarily to be able to track the raw ingredients from purchasing um, through our contract manufacturer and then back into finished goods. Um, also being able to track everything by lot number, batch number for all the regulatory requirement requirements, which was critical for us. Um, and being able to accurately track our COGS. You know, you really have to know uh, accurately what, what your cost of goods are. And so, um, you know, having having that 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 methodology built into the IMS system to be able to accurately track our COGS, that was kind of one of the most important things for me. So being able to accurately track the inventory in the COGS, you know, that's primarily what I was looking to accomplish. And, and that's what uh, we were able to do. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm sure that resonates with some people on this call. So I appreciate you talking a little bit more about what you were looking for. Um, before I move us to the next slide, just really quick, we had a question about uh, before the go live, making sure, um, do, do you need to make sure that you have all open sales orders, open POs and supplier deposits yeah. entered? Um, is that something that like a partner like Accountly would walk you through to make sure that you understand what you need to have set up ahead of time? I mean, I'll, Brad, I'll, I'll answer that. Yeah, <clears throat> we do go through kind of from an aspect of what's open and what makes sense to put into core versus what doesn't, because there may be some uh, uh, workflows or processes that don't make sense to be put in there, right? But, but a PO that, so as it, let's just go as of today, right? You're going to put inventory in hand, let's say you have 100 uh, items of this product. So then if you have a PO that's not received yet, that you've already submitted to a, uh, a supplier or vendor, and basically, if it's going to impact inventory, yes, you'd want to make sure that that's included in there, right? Similarly, on the sales order side, if it hasn't been picked, packed, or shipped yet in invoice, you want to make sure that that's in there. So definitely making sure those are in there, supplier deposits, et cetera, for sure. That's a whole, all the entire kind of uh, process as well uh, from the this item as well. Like in, you know, um, you know, and things like just thinking of like, you know, open invoices or open customer invoices, th those are kind of managed typically in QuickBooks Online. Um, so those don't need to be in decor and all that stuff. The cost of every product you have, you may be like, hey, it changes, but you put a cost in and over time as you basically buy, you know, more of that product, assemble that product, add in the, the laden cost of freight and duties, that's going to change and update over time. So it's not going to be perfect right away, but over time, after you get through a couple of batches and cycles and, 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 and purchase cycles from inventory to sale, that's when really that precision of, of cost comes into place. That's super helpful. Thanks, Brad. And I actually think that transitions us really well into our next slide, which is that we're getting into the do's and the don'ts of implementation, right? Um, and a lot of this, I think we've kind of touched on already, so we won't have to spend a ton of time here, but I do think these are all really valuable bits to bring up. Um, so Connor, Brad, do you want to take it away on some of the do's? Yeah, sure. Um, first one I consider the most important, uh, which makes the entire implementation process easier is clean inputs, clean inputs, clean inputs. So 
um, while you're actually taking the time to reevaluate your entire operation system, essentially, let's also look at, do we need a new skewing nomenclature? What skews are dead stale inventory that we're not actively selling or reordering? Um, are these suppliers still relevant? Do we really want all customers in the system? And is the customer data clean or were we <laughs> at the time uh, capturing customer data using an older system um, and some unreadable uh, spreadsheet. So do make sure um, when you're going into the implementation, have have your data clean um, and something that you want to really look at moving forward and that you can grow into. I, I see some customers um, when they're creating SKUs, it's just SKU 1, SKU 2, SKU 3, SKU 4, and they just got numbers that are running up. Well, that's a prime time to say, okay, Within our SKUs, do we have different categories? So if it's an apparel company, um, for example, the SKU could be M, which means men, S, which means summer, SH, shorts, one. So M, S, S, H, one is men's summer shorts, one. And then you can run with that um, type of skewing uh, architecture, so to speak, for your entire product catalog. So just... Just take some time to really think about uh, how your system set up versus how you want it to be set up and, and clean that data before you begin the implementation process. In terms of uh, testing, you really can't test enough. Um, and I can't say that enough. So make sure on the front end, anyone who is going to be an end user of the system has their workflows laid out. Hey, this is what I need to do within Sin 7 on the daily. What does that workflow look like? And then that employee needs to be testing that workflow. Um, month one, month two, month three, uh, as integrations are added um, and as the system is continuously rolled out, that testing is going to be paramount uh, for a successful launch. And then consider reporting as well. So a lot of the time, if you're skewing a setup proper, properly with a good architecture, it makes reporting a lot easier because you're able to extrapolate data with a little bit more precision. So just consider um, what reports do I want the system to be able to spit out for me when this is all said and done, and then ensure the system is being set up to adhere to those reports. Brad, if you have anything to add, I'd love to hear. Yeah. <clears throat> on the again, I 100% I agree on the clean and complete data is the biggest issue. Like the two biggest issues, I guess I would say, in terms of implementation and why it doesn't work. Number one is stakeholder buy in and just team buy in, where it just doesn't happen. Nobody's focused on it. It's not a big priority organization. We've already talked about that. The second thing is not having all the data, right? And by data, what Connor mentioned is correct, but separately, like, what are all the locations that you house your inventory at? Sometimes we walk through this, we'll be like doing, let's say we do a client that doesn't even have an IMS. We're just walking through the inventory so we can ensure the inventory value on the balance sheet's right. And we're like, okay, this is where you have inventory. This is where you have inventory, right? Yep, good. Three months later, like, by the way, I forgot. I also have inventory at this location, right? So we need to have a complete list of locations. We need to have a complete list of products that you own. We need to have a complete list of like making sure all your bill materials are properly set up, right? Making sure you have a complete list of understanding everything you're selling, not just individual SKUs, but do you do variety packs? Do you, whatever it is, right? Like walking through and making sure everything that you do in your operation is put down on a piece of paper so then it can be implemented properly. The testing, that's just the, the agree on that and, and making sure the testing is done. And the reporting, you know, uh, one of the big things we do with clients that go to uh, core, um, essentially some on their PL, typically before we work with them, they'll have their different either sales channels or even products set up in different uh, lines, right? Uh, rows on the PL. What we do is we basically typically move everybody to where there's like a sales of product income. And then we have different uh, product or uh, using the class function in QuickBooks, we have sales channels. So then the way that, and one of the best things, one of the reasons why we were actually drawn to core years ago was literally the integration with accounting where it's able to, you know, send data over every day where it's able to send data over via the class function to segment in, or uh, revenues, cogs, et cetera, where some other products that exist out there may only do one summary journal entry a month for inventory and cost. So then you have to break it out manually. So like, that's the, the big part of this is the integration with accounting. So understanding that's at that level. And then the last thing is just some folks, it's hard for them to understand. And this goes back to the workflow process change where 
wait, I need to have it in QuickBooks to see this data at the product level. It's like, no, stop. With core product level sales, product level margins, that's in core. So you don't need to do it in QuickBooks anymore at that level, right? QuickBooks is the, is, is the, the, the numbers dive in, right? But not like the quantity analysis, the pricing analysis, the, the turn analysis, things like that. So understanding that as well upfront makes a lot of sense um, um, or, you know, from a, a pre-implementation standpoint. Awesome. Um, and again, I think the the theme I'm hearing here is a lot of this is making sure we're doing everything right from the jump so that you're uh, making sure you don't have as many mistakes, issues, errors later, right? So these are all things to prepare you to be successful moving forward, right. um, which I think we've also heard from, from Eric and the David's team is that uh, having account fully working with them really kind of helped them to know the ins and the outs, the do's as we're on, um, that really set them up for success long-term. Um, that kind of moves us into the don'ts, right? These are all great things to be aware of, but what should you not be doing? Yeah, so one um, big don't, and I think the most important don't is if you have establish that you do need an IMS, you're 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 missing your OGS data. You don't know how much inventory you actually have on hand. You don't know where it is. You've said, okay, it's time to make a switch. Don't procrastinate. So the longer you wait, the more those pains are just going to hurt. Um, if you know that you need to make a switch, don't be afraid of the process. The idea behind this webinar is to kind of demystify and hopefully bring fear out of the implementation process, as I know it can appear to be daunting, which is why a partner helps so much. But also, don't procrastinate. Um, if it's time to move, it's time to move. Um, and then find a system, find a partner, and put one foot in front of the other and, and move forward. And then on that note, don't panic. You know, if during the implementation, a certain system isn't talking to another system in the way in which you imagined or workflows at what you want it to be. Just take a deep breath, take a step back, uh, don't panic and 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 really re 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 look at at what is causing that fear. Talk to your partner and see if you can find a workaround. Um, and yeah, I would say those are the the biggest don'ts that will help ensure a timely um, and just a fun experience versus this being a slog so to speak so yeah thanks for that connor and maybe brad can you speak to because i have a couple questions for uh eric and michelle but brad could you speak to how the partner helps in in this yeah i would just say system expertise again <clears throat> partners like us and again there's 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 many of them on and the, the core since i have a website and help you out but those ones that have that experience across different brands, different supply chains, different sales channels, different external plugins, different reporting requirements can really, um, you know, help that client when they come in board of like, hey, this is my, uh, uh, you know, my workflow, and then implement that in a very efficient manner experience. Again, we can really anticipate and mitigate roadblocks. 100% um, of like, hey, this SKU in this system does not match the SKU in this system um, number. So we need to make sure that that's the same SKU because that's how it's going to work. For example, before core, some people have a SKU managed, you know, Shopify over here, Amazon, a different SKU. Well, in core, it needs to be the same SKU because it's the same product that you're selling and that's how the system needs to work. So we need to make sure that that's, you know, thought out in advance. And then when we raise our hand about that, then the client or the brand can go back, okay, let's reassess how we want to do the SKUs, like what Connor said on the last slide. And then just insights that we see from within it. You know, I, here we, we are, my team basically has direct line to SIN7's kind of support via a Slack channel and things like that. So if something's not sinking or something's bombing out, like our team can be like, hey, is there anything going on? Oh yeah, by the way, we're running a quick push and an update should be good in an hour to reset, right? So we're able to kind of expedite sometimes when when maybe you think things are breaking or <laughs> have no idea, you know, why it's going on. Leveraging that person kind of long-term from a support standpoint um, helps out as well. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Brad. I think that transitions really well into just, Michelle, Eric, can you speak to, um, you know, how did having a partner help, um, especially in, in the thought of like, don't panic, don't procrastinate, how did they kind of help you there? And then, you know, Nichelle, I know your experience really is um, 
post implementation, you've worked with within Sin Seven a lot more, and I'm sure you work with Account Place. I'd love to hear your perspective on um, the benefit of having a partner even now. Okay. So as so far maybe, as yeah, do you want did you want did you want to hear from Nichelle on that first thing? Do you, Eric? You take the wheel. I gave you a lot there to chew on, so you you take okay. it, and then we'll pass it to Nichelle. Yeah, N Nichelle wasn't here for the actual implementation, but she's definitely she is the one who's here on the day to day, um, you know, working daily with uh, Sin Seven. But as far as you know, I, I agree a hundred percent. Like, um, not to procrastinate, not to panic. I think as long as you have a good partner that's holding your hand throughout the whole process, there is no re reason to panic. I'll tell you, if we were doing, if we were trying to do this on our own, I probably would have been panicking because there are quite a few uh, pitfalls for trying to do it yourself. Uh, but having um, somebody that's gone through this, you know, hundreds of times already, that's kind of uh, seen it all, that's been able to um, <clears throat> make all the all the connections that are necessary. Like we we needed connections with, uh, we have EDI orders coming in through SPS Commerce. So we needed to make sure that we had a system that was compatible with that. We we're selling on Amazon. So we needed to make sure the data was flowing in and out correctly with Amazon. We're on Shopify, we're on ShipStation. So you have, you know, all all, all of these, um, these platforms, all these cloud pl platforms that can be, that need to be integrated properly. So making sure that you have the partner that um, that has the experts expertise knowledge they've been there that done that. So um, I know like going into the project, you know, it can be a little bit unnerving. You got all of your data um, <clears throat> that you're trusting to um, go onto this new platform and work correctly. Um, so there, you know, there's always that apprehension like, is everything going to work correctly? But having that partner that is holding your hand throughout the entire process and really doing all the heavy lifting for you. I'll tell you was 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 well worth it, and I I definitely have no no regrets that we used um, Accountly. Um, if you don't use Accountly, you know, using some other uh, certified um, partner, Sin Seven partner is going to be. I I can't emphasize enough um, how much I'd recommend doing that. Um, Accountly was uh, did a perfect job for us, so you know I'm biased towards Accountly, but uh, I'm sure there's other good partners out there as well. Thanks, Eric. And, and Michelle, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to jump in here, Lauren. Um, so I've been here around two years working with um, Accountfully and in Sin7, and I have found that it has been very easy to work with, but it's very, it, you know, obviously I came in, I had to learn, I had other uh, coworkers who were teaching me about the system. And uh, I really appreciated how the system integrates so easily with like, you know, QuickBooks and, and how, you know, the, the back Amazon and how everything just kind of integrates in really well. Um, but I have, there have been time after time after time where there were just um, little, like little hiccups that I just couldn't figure out on my own, no matter how much research I was, I just couldn't do it. And accountfully would just step in and, Sometimes um, it was like Eric, Eric had mentioned earlier. Amazon had made a system a system change on their end, and never you know gave us that information. And I needed accountfully to help me find that. I wasn't able to find the the issue on my own. So there have been times where um, they come in um, and just are able to answer those questions and uh, do some back end things that I'm not able to figure out on my own but they've been uh, invaluable. Having having the uh, the right partner has been invaluable to me. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, that's great. I think that really leads us into uh, our last real big chunk um, of, of today. What I will say is I know we're running out of time. Um, so we'll hit this slide. If we didn't answer a question of yours today, um, we'll try and leave a couple minutes for questions. But if for some reason we didn't, um, you know, please consider reaching out to Accountly, consider reaching out to Sin7. Uh, we'll follow up with those of you who we have your contact information. Um, but I'm going to let Brad and Connor take the wheel on this last slide before we have a few minutes left for Q&A. So let's talk about long-term success. Uh, I think everybody wants to have long-term success. So, so how do you ensure that? How do we do that with implementation? Lauren, um, I know we have to keep it quick. Um, three main things. One, know who is managing what part of the system. So clear stakeholders post live. 
to having an actual resource database that's shareable within your org for ongoing training and keeping up to date with the product is paramount. So if um, a new employee comes on or if just someone has a question in general about how to use the system, make sure they have a resource that they can go to to retrieve uh, that as quickly as possible. And then follow-ups with uh, teammates as well. So whether it be monthly or quarterly, hey, what's working, what's not, are you missing a metric, et cetera, and then tweak the system and just keep it fine-tuned going forward. Yeah, and I'll just jump in on two quick things. The uh, data reviews and audits, making sure the data is accurate, right? A big part of that is, from our perspective, is <clears throat> you know reconciling what's in QuickBooks and accounting to what is over in um Core, right? And then, then what is in Shopify and core? What are your systems making sure that there's integrity of data and that you're having a consistent aspect of, of what those data you know, and reviews are? And if you have any changes and tweaks to your bombs or using a new location, just make sure that's set up for sex, success properly. And then on the training side of things, one, things we, uh, one thing we do with our clients is when we walk through like how it works or have our support conversations, we use Google Meet as a firm. A lot of times we record those meetings. <clears throat> And then, hey, here's this, click this, do this, do this here, boom, put this. All right, here it goes, client. You can then have that video that then you can share internally, whatever. So leveraging even videos and demos on your end, maybe not like the general demos of core, but specific to your organization. Hey, we're going to walk through what this is and this, how this works. Let's record this and put it into a database as, as the counter mentioned. Because a lot of times, like once you do that a couple of times, it, it works well. Thanks. And I, I think, you know, we, I know we flew through this slide a little bit in the interest of time, but I think the, the end all be all is, and the, again, the overarching theme of all of this is if it's done right from the beginning, you're ensuring success moving forward and you're starting processes and procedures that are going to keep you and your team, um, quote unquote, winning uh, moving forward. I think uh, having a partner and having Sin7's help um, will be beneficial to that. Uh, I'm going to move us into our Q&A slide. And, and if you have other questions, please feel free to submit them now. Um, we do have a couple questions I want to highlight. Um, but again, as, as we come to an end, just really want to bring home that uh, we'll be sharing Accountly's information uh, and SIN7 will have more information about our implementation process. Um, so we will share that with you following today. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us with other questions and reply to our emails that we send and we can answer any other questions. Uh, we had a question for Eric and Michelle about uh, pitfalls you could see when doing implementation by yourself, um, or if you have any tips and tricks uh, for SIN7 and for implementation that you could share. Well, because we we didn't do the implement, implementation by ourselves, I, I can't, and it's also been, you know, we implemented this like four years ago now. So, um to go back in, in any like specifics, I, I can't really say that I have any specifics of like, if you're trying to do it by yourself, here's what you should try to avoid. I think the main thing, um, my strongest recommendation would be not to try to do it by yourself. Um, I think um, I think you'll see that the quotes that you're getting on the implementation, um, it's just, it's probably, it's just not worth it. Um, making sure that it's done right correctly is going to be well worth the investment. So I, I would just say, just step up, you know, make the investment in your company to make sure that it's done correctly. Thanks. Um, another question we had, Connor, this might be for you. Um, if, if someone's doing a go live and they're running into problems um, from the Sin7 side, how do they get connected to somebody like you? Yeah. So if someone's actually going through our internal onboarding motion, they're going to have an assigned project or implementation um, manager who should be on on um, call within 24 hours during, during the implementation phase and then same day response during the two week post go live. So that is how you would receive um, immediate assistance from our actually our implementation team who would be managing your, your implementation. Me, myself, or the partnership team, um, we don't actually manage implementation projects themselves, but my email is always available and my Zoom link is in my signature. And if you are a customer, a prospective customer, I would always love to talk to you. So that is my availability. Thanks, Connor. And then a lot of the last questions are a little specific, but 
some of them are really just asking for like any last minute tips, tricks before they implement things that we maybe didn't cover or uh, any, any suggestions going into the implementation process. Um, so maybe this is the best way to end uh, Brad, Connor, Eric, Nichelle. Is there any last minute thoughts you'd want to share with someone getting ready to start the implementation process? Um, just any last piece of advice that you would offer as they begin. Um, I'll just jump in quick on a couple of things. Um, number one, even if you don't use an expert partner like us, uh, if you have any friends uh, within, you know, that have a business that have used and stuff and core, um, you know, offering tips and tricks on those on that aspect there um, helps out. And then a really good time to implement the product is when maybe your supply chain or workflow is changing, i.e. I'm changing 3PLs, I'm changing, you know, locations, I'm changing uh, my bill of materials because we're moving to a different supply chain model. So be aware of that as well as you go forward, because you're already changing one thing. So it may not hurt to do them all at the same time and get your arms around everything. Yeah. And um, I would say also, and we didn't cover this at all in the presentation, but make sure you're moving forward with the system you can also grow into whether that is or is not since seven. Um, you know, it is quite an operational lift. And it's the backbone of your ops. So if you're going to outgrow it in 12 to 18 months, and the only reason you're going with that solution is for price, I would say that's a poor move. So make sure that the system's going to be able to support you for, I would say, a minimum of five years, um, looking at whatever your growth trajectory might be. Yeah, and I would say, you know, we have an in-house uh, accounting team. Um, Nichelle heads up our accounting. But being able to have the um, the second set of eyes, having somebody like Accountfully that can put a second set of eyes on things, um, you know, as we're closing out the month, closing out the quarter, acting as our CPA for the end of the year to handle our taxes, you know, tying it all together, I think that's my biggest tip is um, making sure that you're not just doing it all on your own and that you do have, um, a second set of eyes that um, really are uh, experts in what they're doing, both on the SIN 7 and accounting side together is really what's going to help this be successful and help your uh, make sure that you have uh, an accurate inventory system in place going long term. Uh, one of the things, I mean, I'm kind of just tacking this on the end here because uh, I, I didn't mention any of it is that the, the reporting on this system on SIN 7 is great. You can customize all your reports and, you know, add so many different things and you can customize them, save them, name them. So um, even when you're doing your inventory, you can put all your inventory in very quickly, very great system to use. Um, I know these were like tips and tricks, but those are just some things that I, I hadn't mentioned on this call. And I just wanted to say those were really great things about um, some about SIN 7. Yeah. Another another tip would be there's some add-on, you know, there's some add-on apps that that some integrations that plug into Sin7 that we've used as well. So we have a monthly call with Accountfully and you're able to set up um, a long list of KPIs so we can go through, um, you know, over 20 different KPIs that's, that we have set up and go through it with Accountfully so we really know how we're tracking on all of our expenses and our margins. Um, so um, that would be another tip is to take advantage of some, some of the integrations that are available with SIN7. Thanks, Eric. And, and thank all three of you, um, you know, for taking the time to talk us through this today. Um, implementation isn't like a light topic. There's a lot of ins and outs to it. Um, and, and having a, a partner obviously really helps. Um, SIN7 and, and our implementation is available too, but we want to make sure that you're set up for success. That's the purpose of this whole webinar. Um, so thank you to Eric, Michelle, uh, Brad, and Connor for taking the time to talk about this. Thank you all for attending. Uh, we'll be following up shortly with a recording of this and then to answer any other questions you might have. Um, so thank you all again, and I hope you all have a really wonderful rest of your day. All right. It's been a pleasure. Bye now. Thanks, all. Thanks, everything. Bye-bye.